Hello. How are you? This is episode 26 of my eShop Games Worth Buying series. If it's your first one, don't worry. You don't have to start scrambling to go and watch the other 25 to catch up on key story plot points. It just means I have reviewed 10 games 25 other times and you missed it. Initially, I had a list of 10 games for this video, but just randomly I decided to tweet, what are your favorite eShop games that I haven't talked about yet? I I thought I knew mostly what was on the eShop. I was wrong because there were loads of suggestions for games I had never heard of before. So thank you so much if you were one of those people, but even if you weren't, hey, thank you anyway. Thank you for being here, liking the video and subscribing and leaving a comment below. So with all that said, Sit back, relax, or not, it's your life, do what you want. However you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoy it, and now uh, let's get started. We need to start with Monster Harvest. For those that watch my content, I owe this game the shout out it now deserves. Monster Harvest is a farming adventure with a twist. For those that have played games like Stardew Valley, there's a lot to be familiar with here. It also blends in elements from the Pokemon franchise in a very unique way. Day and evening cycles through three unique seasons, each with their own crops you can grow. There's a cast of NPC characters around town you can get to know and build relationships with by gifting them presents, and a cave filled with randomly generated rooms for you to explore, mine for materials, and battle creatures with your planimals. What's a planimal, you may be asking? <laughs> While growing your crops, you can spread a strange colored ooze on them, each with varying effects. Red will mutate the crop into a creature known as a planimal, which will join your party and head out on adventures with you. This is where the battling comes into play, with each planimal having its own abilities for the turn-based combat. You can level up your potato pets by winning battles. If they do die, not all is lost as you can use their smushed up remains as fertilizer, making all future planimals on your farm grow even stronger. We have a blue ooze which creates livestock planimals. These sit in the barn producing eggs, wool, and more, and some of them are really cute. Look at this fox guy I have and this big cow. Or is it a sheep? I think it's a sheep. The pink thing, I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you to experiment with each type of crop to see what kind of livestock, planimal, or even mount it creates. I have a potato horse. Several weeks back, I made a video titled, Do Not Buy This Nintendo Switch Game. And the one I was telling you not to buy then was this game. It was a buggy, broken mess. I'm happy to announce that it's fixed. <laughs> Not only was there an update addressing all those issues and more, but to be sure, I dived back into the game and I played through one whole year cycle and yeah, everything is fixed. It all works now. Hooray. <laughs> I'm super happy for the devs and now's the time to grab this fun little title. Huh? Oh, uh, today's video sponsor is Audible. And now listen to Audible, but also to me. I don't get that Audible sponsorship coming through all too often, which is a shame because I thoroughly enjoy using Audible. And honestly, I pay for it myself and I use it every month. So do me a favor and seriously consider visiting audible.com forward slash beat-em-ups or text beat-em-ups to 500 500. The reason why I love Audible is because I love books, but I I hate reading them. <laughs> okay, I don't hate reading them, but I just, I don't have the time. Audible's audiobooks are a joy to listen to. Often they're narrated by the book's own author, which is such a unique and incredible experience. Hearing Matthew McConaughey read his own memoirs, Barack Obama retelling his story from birth to becoming the president, or one of my favorites, Jerry Seinfeld narrating his first book in 25 years. I mean, the list just goes on and on with thousands Thousands of titles, even to podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. Again, who's got the time, right? But with Audible, I can listen to it while I'm editing, walking, cooking, cleaning, or just straight up relaxing. You can download titles to listen to offline. The app is free to download and you can listen across multiple devices without losing your spot. You don't have an excuse. There's always something on Audible. 
that will interest you, teach you, help you, entertain you. See what they have to offer by visiting audible.com slash beat-em-ups or texting beat-em-ups to 500-500. If you don't mind me, I'm gonna go back to listening. Because what's the deal with Audible? Am I right? That was my, that was my Jerry. The next game comes to us from a local fat man. That was his name on Twitter. Thank you for submitting Tori2. Tori2 is a budget, fast-paced platformer, and I honestly can't believe it's only $1 on the eShop. I mean, what you see is what you get, but there's actually a decent amount of content here. Nine levels, each with unique elements and challenges. You can either go for a breezy playthrough or try to beat all the time challenges or collect all the Carl's Jr. looking stars to get the full complete completionist rating. Tori 2 has this nice late 90s low poly throwback aesthetic and it feels similar to a Sonic game with its flow focused levels. I enjoyed blasting around the levels of Tori 2 so much I went ahead and picked up Tori 3D. It's another one dollar smash hit. This one feels more like an old school platformer. In fact to be exact it gives me some serious croc vibes. You have full control over the camera and it's much slower paced but way more platformer focused. These hexagonal platforms and even the sound Tori is making when he jumps is just making me want to boot up Windows 95 and save some gobos. I think it's safe to say these two Tori games are the best $1 games on the console, but hey, I only know about them because someone on Twitter told me, so maybe there is more. Ariel on Twitter recommended this next one. Thank you. Turnip Boy commits tax evasion has a wonderful sense of humor. The game opens with a tax bill that was apparently due yesterday in the amount of $143,000. From there, a disheveled looking turnip boy sets out on a quest to make that money somehow. So while the game's visuals and the fact that a watering can is the first item you obtain might lead you to think it's another farming sim, you couldn't be more wrong. It's almost an intentional spin-off of the genre and much more akin to a traditional Zelda game. Even more evident by the extra hearts you gain by defeating a dungeon boss and the plant sword you're given because it's dangerous to grow alone. You use the sword to demolish your enemies and the watering can in a variety of ways, like growing bombs you can kick around to demolish enemies or also open new pathways. Around the dungeon crawling action and combat, you also need to help fellow fruit and vegetable NPCs with their quests, like finding this carrot's lost child, which I found in a trash can behind an old building. Not exactly winning Mum of the Year award or anything. I found the writing delightfully humorous, like this red pepper named Belch who runs the Way Sandwich Stand, home of the Tier 3 sub. The Twitch joke. I'm on Twitch at beatemups.tv, so like, I got it. He even wants someone to eat one of his subs on a live stream so that business will pick up. Thankfully, I did find someone famous who even offered me exclusive access if I gave her a tier 3 sub. Okay, you get it. The writing is good. But I have one more example, because usually I don't laugh out loud at something in a game. So there's a nursery, and there were three baby beans on the ground. One said goo goo, the other said gaga. So I was curious as to what would follow, and I was taken pleasantly off guard as he greeted me with, hello, plebeian. This small bean wrapped in lettuce lying helplessly on the floor just called me a commoner in ancient Rome. This has made it a joy to talk to and meet every single character I could just to experience whatever they had to say. It's another short few hour adventure, so be beware of that before buying. Be beware of that before buying. Try saying that five times fast. But I certainly got my money's worth of chuckles. Be beware before buying. Be beware before buying. Be beware before buying. None of this is scripted. It's late. I had never even heard of Monomals until Tristan suggested it. And I couldn't find anyone talking about the Switch release. Not a single review. But I found buried in my emails a Switch code for the game that the developers had sent over. And after playing it, I was baffled how this game had gone under everyone's radar. So I checked the release date and it turns out the game wasn't out yet. In fact, as of recording this, it's still not out. It comes out tomorrow. <laughs> Monomals has you diving into the world of music and I'm digging it. This one throws me back to early SNES days with its bright cartoonish and colorful visuals, glimmering coins to collect, and simple but smooth controls. You play as a 
DJ, technically? I mean, not really. You play as a DJ casting a fishing line, and then when it hits the water, you take over as the lure. So I guess technically you play as a fishing lure. Exploring the depths beneath, looking for monomals to catch and collect. There's 28 courses, each filled with unique hazards, challenges, secret areas, and collectibles. Some of the concepts are quite clever, with the lure being able to move freely in water, but only being able to jump outside of it for a short amount of time. And there are plenty of gadgets and objects underneath the water to interact with too. The really clever part is that each level ends with you completing a boss-like challenge to unlock and catch a new monomal. Not a planimal, a monomal. Which will not only act as in-game progression, allowing you to discover new DJs and areas to explore, but you can also take the monomals into a music maker program and place them around a timeline to create your own music. It's a brilliant idea and it's like another game within the game, but both the games are cohesive. Each individual monomal will make its own bass, drum, and lead sound. You can place them wherever, even stretch them out or create other fun effects with them to make whatever kind of sick beat you want to make. The fact that you can create your own music to play during your fishing adventures is something I've never seen done before, and it's so smart. You can even share your music creations online for others to download and join weekly contests to become the best monomals musician there is. It's a really fun concept with great execution. Next is a, a game that was submitted, but definitely not by a fan, because my buddy RGT85, I don't think he watches my content anymore. At one point, he said he was a fan of me. I think that changed throughout the years. <laughs> now he's just my really good friend. Sean suggested I play Ultra Age, because it's a lot like Devil May Cry, and he knows I'm a massive fan of the franchise. But rather than I review the game, Sean is the only creator, I think, who has ever appeared in these eShop videos, but he hasn't been on in a long time, so I want Sean to review Ultra Age for us. Well, it was nice of you to dig me out of the closet like you're Andy throwing away your old toys. When was the last time I've been on this channel? Do these people even know who RGT85 is? Because I, I highly doubt they do. Today, we're gonna talk about Ultra Age on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a game that came out on the eShop and I really liked it. I was very impressed with what this game brought to the table. Essentially, think of like an old school God of War or a Devil May Cry game. And that's what you essentially have with this game. It's an action adventure game, sort of set in the future, a very sci-fi theme to it. But the combat is what really makes this game a lot of fun. There's a ton of different different combos that you get. There's a ton of different weapons you unlock as well. And it really sort of keeps the gameplay flowing and it keeps everything fresh throughout your adventure. There's also like a way to sort of traverse through the area, a little bit like the Monster Hunter Rise wire bug, but it's not really that pertinent. You can use it on things like the boss battles and stuff, which I feel like gives another extra layer of strategy to the game. Now there is a demo available on the Nintendo Switch eShop if you're interested in this game, but I will say the performance of the demo is a little bit lacking in terms of like the frame rate, but it's definitely not as bad in the full version of the game. It's kind of weird. I think the graphics look really nice too. You know, they're pretty simplistic, but you get some nice little environments and you get some nice looking enemies and the combos themselves have a lot of flash and flair to them and everything moves at a pretty solid pace. It kind of reminds me of like the PS2 era where you had your middleware games, games that, yeah, they weren't worth a full $60, maybe worth $40 or in this case, $30, but they were still fun experiences. They were still games that people would want to check out because the gameplay was really good. And I feel like that's where Ultra Age sort of falls in line with. So those are my thoughts on Ultra Age. It's definitely a game worth checking out if you're an action adventure fan looking for something a little bit different. Thanks for remembering me, Wood. Maybe, you know, it won't take another year and a half for me to be on your channel again. RGT85, go hit the subscribe button. Thistle to who? That's a name of a person. Well, it's at least their username and they recommended Flynn, Son of Crimson. It's a handcrafted classic 2D adventure platformer and it's gorgeous. Some areas can legitimately be breath taking with stunning light rays pouring through the treetops. I, I just love when the pixel art genre is nailed. And I mean, look at this good boy. Oh, it's a girl? Well, that's even cuter. You play as Flint, setting out on an adventure with his dog Dex, and everything is fine until a mysterious figure saps Dex of all her magical power. No! It awakens something within Flynn, unlocking his hidden crimson power. Now, Flynn's new goal is to explore the land to save his best friend, because of course it is. What is this, John Wick? The game plays out as a side-scrolling platformer with beat-em-up style combat. You have a dodge roll, range attacks, as well as a crimson sword, 
what another weapons and abilities you unlock as you play through the adventure. Like the, like Berserker, the Berserker State that has you wrecking <laughs> havoc on everything that stands before you. There is a good amount of challenge to be found here, especially in the boss fights. It's nothing like Dark Souls level of brutally difficult or anything, but they will provide a decent challenge. Enough so that you'll actually have to try and learn some patterns and keep moving, otherwise you'll be facing the wrong end of the game over screen. There's even a skill tree to level up your moves, which is nice. You'll get a decent amount for just playing linearly through the game, but you'll be rewarded a lot more for going back and exploring areas you may have missed or unlocking new areas you couldn't previously. Linearly. 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 That's probably not a word. Flynn is by no means anything groundbreaking, but it's a solid fun experience that for $20 I really enjoy. It's also currently free on Game Pass if you want to try dipping your little toes into the Xbox. I'd be lying if I didn't say I've been putting off playing Toem. It looks exactly like a game I would enjoy, but it wasn't even going to be in this video. But Lan, as well as a bunch of others, suggested it. So fine, I decided to finally play it, and okay, I really love it. Thank you for making me play it. <laughs> The hand-drawn art style is immediately striking. Kim was watching me play this one and mentioned it's very reminiscent of Richard Scarry's work. That's very nostalgic for me. It's probably why I like it. And going the full send black and white aesthetic was a bold choice, but I feel like it really paid off. If you enjoy Pokemon Snap, you may love Toem and especially love the freedom it gives you to take photos of whatever you want, whenever you want, without it slowly moving past you before you get a chance to take Take the nice picture you were trying to line up. It's a puzzle adventure set in a mysterious magical world filled with quirky characters, many of whom have problems that can only be solved by you snapping neato photos. Like a hotel manager who wants a picture of his hotel, but it's too big to fit in a close up photo. So you need to solve a series of other characters problems from a sock man missing his favorite pair of socks to a group of kids who just want to play hide and seek all to find your way up high enough to get a pic of the entire higher building. Solving all of these puzzles will add stamps to your bus card, and after playing for just a few moments, your journal will be filled with fun requests and challenges to gain even more stamps. The more stamps you have, the more areas you can travel to on the bus. Unlocking all the areas is key for solving multiple puzzles that span across all locations. The puzzles can be solved in any order too, so if you get stumped on one, just move on to another one for a while. There's a bunch of cute locations, from forests, cities, beaches, and more. The camera can be used in a few different ways to capture everything these locations have to offer, from straight up photos to selfies and even a tripod that allows you to move around the frame. The game is designed to be deliberately small, completed in a few hours, but its experience is dense. Toem is filled with heart, humorous whimsy, and demonstrates perfectly that it's okay to slow down and enjoy the little things in life, and sometimes snap a nice photo of them. The next one's all me. Road 96. Hitchhike your way to freedom in a procedurally generated road trip where no one's experience is the same. I initially checked this game out live on Twitch and instantly fell in love with the vibes. I'm a big fan of the interactive movie game genre with the Telltale The Walking Dead series being one of my all time favorites favorites. It has a beautiful visual style, a soundtrack filled with 90s hits that consistently threaten my stream of getting DMCA'd, and a thousand different routes through the game. Everyone's game starts differently. For me, I was in a sidecar of a motorbike barreling down the freeway, teetering dangerously on the edge of a cliff. Here, I met two of the game's best characters, Stan and Mitch, a couple of thieves on the run from the law. In this one segment of my adventure alone, I had so many decisions to make, but a big one was whether or not I wanted to continue riding with these criminals or just go at it alone. The choice not only changes where you end up next, but can also cost you stamina that you may need later depending on how your journey plays out. You can take the bus, call a taxi, or if you spent all your money on snacks, you can try hitchhiking. But uh, 
You'll never know what kind of weirdo you'll end up with. There's rarely a dull moment throughout the game. Between meeting new and interesting, well-voiced characters, playing different mini-games, the possibility of getting arrested, and many life or death scenarios you could wind up in. The aim of the game is to try and make it across the border, as many people are trying to escape the country due to the current in-game political climate. If you do end up kicking the bucket, getting hauled off to the slammer, or being lucky enough to actually make it across, which will take a certain amount of luck and skill. I did do it on my first try though. <laughs> High five to me. And I'm alone. You'll begin another run with a different random teenager and attempt to do it all over again. Try and get as many kids across the border as you can before the day of the big election. And depending on how you play each story, that will drastically shape the end of the game. Road 96 is a very ambitious idea that ultimately paid off. And for 2696, I see what they did there. This game is certainly worth playing. The next one comes from JH on Twitter. They recommended Cook Serve Delicious 2. Move over, Cooking Mama. Delicious dishes and intense gameplay is now to go. <laughs> Get it? to go. Run your restaurant and pick up shifts in your quest to be the best chef in the world. This one surprised me. I took one look at it. I thought, no thank you, played it, and I liked it. While the game's aesthetics and customer art designs leave a lot to be desired, pretty much everything else about this game is surprisingly quality. From the wonderfully realistic food to the manic gameplay. Imagine Overcooked, but it's just you and your kitchen, and you're just making food. Orders will start piling in and you need to, as quickly as possible, cook and serve these delicious meals. The chaos comes in almost immediately, with even simple orders becoming tricky to navigate until you've learned some serious muscle memory. Let's say you want to throw down a burger with cheese. First you gotta cook the meat, but once it's ready, you can hold left trigger to select bacon, cheese, or lettuce, each tied to a different input. Then by holding the right trigger, you can throw down tomato, Swiss, pickles, or onions. Then you can move on to the next page of ingredients, like mushrooms or egg, and then even pick the bun the customer asked for. Each menu item can be customized in so many different ways. So making a lot of these meals end up feeling like playing the piano, having to remember all the button combinations. There's even more to think about too, like if you work at Max Wieners, <laughs> they serve pretzels, but they take a while to bake. So on top of whatever orders you have coming in that need to be made to order, you also need to make sure you're baking trays of pretzels in advance for when someone eventually does order one. On top of that, it seems as though you are the only person in this entire restaurant capable of doing anything, because you also have to clean the toilets, take out the trash, kill the rats, and more. It's that complex. For every restaurant, and there is tons, everything from Sub Solutions, which is 100% supposed to be a Subway, to Burrit O, which is the poop palace that we all know and love, Chipotle. There's actually a ton of content here with 60 plus hours of gameplay spanning 400 levels across 33 restaurants and 108 unique food and drink items. So get cooking and don't screw up the salmon. Because you know what'll happen. I have too much to say about Eastwood. It's a game that deserves its own video, but I don't feel like I could do it justice no matter how I try and elaborate it. It's an experience, one that needs to be played rather than shown or talked about. Developed by Chucklefish, the same team who published Inmost and Stardew Valley, and developed by three people at a Shanghai-based company called Pixpill, a masterclass in pixel art design with every scene packed dense with detail and a a catchy chiptune soundtrack that'll get stuck in your head for days. Eastwood is a story-driven action adventure that seemingly borrows gameplay elements from Zelda, Earthbound, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and it borrows story and art elements from Studio Ghibli, but it all comes together in its own unique way to create something that is solely original on its own. The story follows Sam and John, and you play as both. Their relationship similar to that of Joel and Ellie's. The duo live underground, in a community 
only taught to fear the outside world. They're told there's nothing up there, but Sam doesn't believe it. Determined to find her way to the surface, John follows and they both end up exiled to the world above. They follow the train, which is always headed eastward through a series of different towns, each with its own culture, characters, and story. There's a nice blend of narrative-driven cutscenes, dungeon crawling with combat and puzzles, often having to switch between Sam and John on the fly to accomplish different tasks or traverse the environment safely, ultimately ending with awesome boss fights. In between all of that, you can make some time for Breath of the Wild-inspired cooking and some mini-games. You can find an old gaming machine where you can play another game, a full old-school Dragon Quest clone game that's really hard to beat and actually kind of fun. The only thing I'll say, it's maybe too story-heavy, with long dialogue sequences, a lot of reading, and often a longing to get back into the action. I feel a lot of the story could have been refined and hacked away at to present a shorter, more engaging playthrough, and I only bring this up because it is so story-heavy that I want you to know that before going into it. This game is a game that, as I said, should be experienced rather than just shown to you in some random long-haired Australian's 10 list of games on the eShop worth buying video. There isn't a game more worth it on this list or any of my other lists than Eastwood. Okay, great. That was it. Thank you so much for watching. That's another 10. I'm really glad I got to talk about some games I've been really dying to talk about, like Eastwood. Also, I'm so glad that Monster Rancher managed to get fixed and even made it into one of these videos. Wow, what a comeback story that was. These videos take a lot of work, arguably some of the most work on the channel. Days of playing and trying games, a whole day usually of writing the script, then filming before you even get to the editing. But I love doing them so much and I can't wait to get to episode 30. So if you enjoy them, help them by liking, commenting, subscribing, share the video even. While you're down in the description, click the link for the sponsor of the video. I appreciate that. And also RGT's channel. Go check him out. Why not? I can think of a few reasons, but do it anyway. You ready? This is, this is for you watching at home. I kiss you. I kiss you digitally. Can't get sick that way. Bye.